And now what is very interesting about unemployment and vacancies is that actually they uh, move together in a very special way. Uh, and that's something that uh, we see within actually many countries. And that's something that provides a lot of information when you try to build the model of the labor market. So we've seen that vacancies are pro-cyclical, right? So they go up in good times, down in bad times. Unemployment is the opposite, it's counter-cyclical. It goes up in bad times and um, down in good times. Now, what happens when we plot vacancies and unemployment together uh, in a scatter plot? So this is what this graph is showing you. So on the y-axis, um, we have vacancies here. And on the x-axis, we have unemployment. Um, now, unemployment is plotted as an unemployment rate, vacancy as a vacancy rate, and furthermore, we plot the log of the unemployment rate, the log of the vacancy rate. That's not critical. You could just plot the unemployment rate, the vacancy rate without log. Pulling log is nice because it allows us to kind of straighten out a little bit the graph. Uh, it's just a simple transformation, uh, but it doesn't you know, really change the meaning. So what do we see when we plot log unemployment rate against log vacancy rate? Uh, so, how do you read this graph? So here, you can start, so this is 1951 here. So this means that in 1951, and in fact in the first quarter, the log unemployment rate was, you know, at this level, and the log vacancy rate was at this level. So it's just a scatter plot of unemployment against vacancies. And then, as the time goes by, this purple line is showing you how the unemployment rate and the vacancy rate are moving. So, as we move, we move along this line. So you can see here we are starting now to go down, starting to go down, starting to go down. So this is just as time goes by. You know, now we are like to the late 50s and you're in the 60s. And you can see that when your unemployment rate is going up, your vacancy rate is going down. Going down, going down. So here is where the unemployment rate is the highest. So here you have a recession. Then things recover, you start to move back up along this line. And so you can see that as things recover, the unemployment rate goes down, the vacancy rate goes up. And then, you know, you reach this point, then you keep on going down, and so on and so forth. Here you have another recession that you joined at that point. As things recover, you start to climb back up, and so on and so forth. Okay? Uh, and then, you know, then you go here, then you go here, then you go here, and then you reach, you know, the late 60s, and you reach that point here. So what do we see here? Well, what's very striking is that as the unemployment rate and the vacancy rate are going up and down, they seem to be moving along some almost straight line. So you can see uh, here, first we have an almost straight line. Here, we have another almost straight line. So this is very striking. It means that um, somehow vacancies and unemployment are connected through some macroeconomic law that uh, makes them move along this, uh, this very striking, almost linear uh, locus of points. Uh, so this connection is something that uh, plays a very important role in the study of unemployment. It has a name, this curve. It's called the beverage curve. It's named after um, William Beveridge, who was a British macroeconomist, who discovered that relationship between unemployment and vacancy first in British data, uh, just around uh, the middle of the 20th century, so in the late 40s, uh, early 50s. And he realized that systematically, when you had high unemployment, you had low vacancy. When you had low unemployment, you had high vacancy. Uh, and that relationship was then explored um, in the US in the 60s, and people discovered that in the US as well, the same beverage curve existed, that you had the same relationship between unemployment and, uh, and vacancies. And then people have started to look at many other countries, and they found that in many, many countries, you always see a beverage curve relationship like this. So this seems to be a very important 
empirical law that describes the labor market. And so when we are going to build a model of the labor market, we we'll want to make sure that we obtain a beverage curve like this, that we can explain why unemployment and vacancies are negatively correlated like this. Okay, that's going to be uh, one of the objectives of our model is to capture that beverage curve. So it's something that's very important that seems to describe a fundamental property of the labor market. So here I've stopped only at uh, 1969, so I was just so that we can see, but we can keep on moving over time. So here I show you the next period in the US. So here you see we start where we left off, 1970. And so what happened over time? Well, in the 70s here you have a recession, so your unemployment goes up, your vacancies uh, go down, then you have a small recovery here until here, then you have another kind of recession, unemployment goes up, vacancy goes down until you get to that point, then you have a lot of movement here, so you have a first recovery and then you have another big recession. So you can see here we are the furthest out in terms of unemployment, so that we know what it is. It means that it's the worst point in the post-war period in terms of unemployment, that's the recession of like 1982. Okay. Um, but here you can see again, we tend to see this line, these linear relationships. Uh, so here especially you can see a very clear line, so the, this unemployment and vacancy seem to be moving along you know, very linear, uh, along a very linear path. So you have one here and in a sense, you could also say you know, you have one here as well. Um, okay, um, so then we can move on. So, so here we are stopping in 1989, then we can see another 20 years of data, the 90s and 2009. So this one is particularly interesting. Um, so now we're getting closer to modern times. Uh, so here in the 90s, you can see, so we start from here, you have first recession, so this is a Gulf War recession. Um, then the economy recovers here. Okay, and then something very interesting is here you see this is um, the Great Recession here. And you can see with a very large increase in unemployment. And as you can see, as we move and as the economy gets worse and worse from the mid 2000s to 2009, again, it's almost a straight line in terms of unemployment and vacancies. And you get to that point here where unemployment was close to 10% in 2009. Okay, uh, so again a very very clear uh, beverage curve appears here and then we can look at the end of the sample that we have available the last 10 years and now you can see here it's a giant recovery but again along a very linear path. So here we're in 2010 you have a lot of unemployment and then the economy, the US economy starts recovering. Unemployment goes down, vacancy go up and you move like this over time until you reach 2019 here, which is um, the peak of the boom following the Great Recession. Um, and again, if we wanted to highlight that, um, that's a very almost linear relationship here. Um, okay, um, so that's a really important pattern that we want to, uh, to explore and that we want to explain.